Let's do one more word with Sandra Puputello, who's running for the Ontario Liberal Party leadership. And I want to ask you, I guess, uh, what's a pretty obvious question, which is if you look at the 24 people who've been Premier of Ontario up until mm -hmm. now, they've all been men descended from ancestors who come from the British Isles. You obviously would not be. You are a woman descended of Italian parents. And I wonder how big a deal that is to you. It is a big deal, actually. One of, of all the things that ever happened to me, when my own community uh, gave me the Italian of the Year Award, that was a big deal for me. Um, and I think anyone who does come, you know, maybe it's more the opportunity of wanting to do well because your parents came here in order for you to do well. You really need to do well when you've got that kind of pressure, right? And maybe this would be that kind of achievement that my mom would say, okay, maybe politics was a good idea. Because she was not really in favor of me running back in 1994. What that first conversation with her, she just said, are you crazy? Is she, really? And uh, what ideas did she have for you? Well, I just remember I was a child. I always wanted to be a veterinarian, you know. Um, and I don't know when all of that changed, but because I've been involved in politics since I was literally 14, working for Herb Gray, um, I still didn't think I would be a candidate when it happened. I thought maybe when you know my kids went to university and I'd be left at you know whatever. It just life does not. Nothing in my world has gone according to plan. Let me just say that. Nothing's gone according to plan. Is it a bigger deal to you, and it maybe hard to answer because it's asking you in some respects to separate one part of your personality from, a, mm. from your gender. Would it be a, a more historic victory for you to be the first woman premier of Ontario or the first premier, if I can put it this way, with a vowel at the end of their name, even though we actually technically have had premiers with vowels at the end of their names like Bob Ray and anyway. <laughs> You know what I, I get mean. your point. You know what I mean. I'm not sure, because I often think that the, the gender question isn't as relevant as the personality required for this time. And that if they're looking for a woman, it may actually be that they are looking for someone who perhaps could be more conciliatory, and women would tend to be. I also feel that uh, women come into the business of politics for different reasons, typically. We don't go looking to say, I need to be the premier, and I won't be happy in life until I am. That's never been part of my world. Um, I think we tend to look for the opportunity to move our agenda forward, and politics ends up being that way. Uh, for me, going from a volunteer to actually running as a candidate was all about the social agenda, children's mental health, health care, understanding that what I saw happening wasn't good enough for my community. Uh, Windsor was woefully behind. Doctors, children, we, we had a half-time psychiatrist for children when I got elected. When I left a year and a half ago, we had eight full-time. That to me was a triumph. So are women more interested in those issues? Usually. Um, so I actually think it is, you know, it might get classified by gender, but it will tend to be what drives you and is that what's required right now. Right now in a minority house with a Liberal Party who's had a very tough year, I think, I hope that my party is looking for me for a couple of reasons. Electoral success, understanding that I can take on the NDP and the Conservatives, because at some point, minority governments don't tend to go the whole term. So we don't know that we have the time to get used to it. You have to be used to it and they know that I am. I spent two out of my four elections around the province as deputy leader, um, you know, shoring up other campaigns. That's what you have to do as the leader. You need to, to sort of hit the ground running on a number of fronts. But make no mistake, my party needs to elect a leader that they feel can win an election whenever that comes. <laughs> Otherwise, I have been in a party that's languished because my party in Ontario hasn't been in, you know, over the years, mostly not in government. Absolutely. You don't get to move any agenda forward when you're not in government. It's really difficult. I want my party to be in government, and I know my party members want that too. Now here's the other odd thing. If you win and become premier, I don't think any premier, well I know, no premier we've ever had is married to a politician who has been elected in another province. I know. But that's your situation. That's your husband so cool. is a member of the House of Assembly in Newfoundland. Right. And last fall he got elected and, and, a I, w and I was his campaign manager. Okay, so, so how and I must say that's the first time I was ever a campaign manager. And it, it was a, a very good grounding experience for well, me. How's that going to work so. if you're the premier here and he has to be 
you know, living in Newfoundland to do his thing there. Well, to be fair, for the whole 10 years that we've been together, he's lived in Newfoundland. And when I was here, even in the very beginning, I would be off on trips as the International Trade Minister, I work being in Toronto for Queen's Park. So we've always had a long distance relationship. This frankly isn't any different. Hmm. Okay, I know part of the drill is you agreed to come here today and take our questions oh, if you got to ask about me one. time. Okay. And the, one, the same one that I asked John Tory, are you going to run for mayor of the city of Toronto? What? I <laughs> Sorry, say that so again? Is that just not on the, in is the that cards? The, is that because I watch you when you're out and about. You know you're this like is a, a serious program, eh? We ask serious like questions a, here. But you're like a movie star. Everyone wants your autograph. They take Cut. pictures with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess the short answer is, uh, oh, are you out of your other, mind? No, the absolutely not. The thing I was going to ask you, because you'll probably remember when I was Minister of Education. Of course. I was rained upon when they suspected that I was cutting money from TVO instead of making massive investments. And I always thought, well, pretty much you got your own show. You went from, I don't even remember the last show, to a whole hour of the agenda all the time. I essentially made your career for you. Uh, you know, I've never actually thought of it that way, but... <laughs> now that I mentioned it. Now that it. you review it, the, you know, the one thing I remember about your tenure as education minister, uh -huh. you got a front page photo op on the Toronto Star with Pokeroo. I do that remember that. High, I have to say, one of the highlights of my career. <laughs> it was fantastic. But we did. We separated TVO, TFO, so that the French version could have a standalone unit and really do their thing. Yes. TVO is spectacular. You've got great management. You're doing a great job. And, and every Everybody loves it, and you, you're like a movie star. Oh my God. <laughs> Remind me why we invited you here again? <laughs> anyway, it's Thank great you, to Sandra see Pupitello. you. Thank you, Sandra Okay. It is great I to think, see you. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.